We begin with breaking news tonight. More than 100 high school students are in quarantine in Oceanside after a student tested positive for COVID-19 just days after that school reopened. Good evening, I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. The positive case came at Mission Vista High School where students just returned to school this week. News Aid's Shannon Handy has more. This is happening just two days after the district reopened all of its campuses. I did have a chance to speak with one senior here and he says he's not surprised. According to the district, more than 130 students in four classes at Mission Vista High School in Oceanside, along with four teachers and one aide, have been ordered to quarantine for two weeks after one student tested positive for COVID-19. Were you surprised this is happening just two days after you guys reopened? Not at all. Not at all. It's a large amount of students going to school. Uh, from what I've seen, everyone is wearing their mask, but it just seems like some kids are still doing the normal things outside of school that could affect them and could leave them at risk. Senior Trey LeBlanc says he was alerted by his teachers. Fortunately, he wasn't impacted, but district officials say they have to act with an abundance of caution and based on their decision tree, anyone who may have had contact with a student does have to quarantine. At this point, this is the only reported case in the district. On Tuesday, as Vista Unified opened up all campuses to half of its 20,000 students who chose to return, some teachers had expressed concerns to News 8 saying there weren't enough consistent safety protocols in place. Not all classrooms do students have the ability to social distance, especially in our high school and middle school. A lot of our members uh, that right now don't have adequate PPE. No word yet on who the infected student is, but they reportedly caught the virus off campus. Today, the FDA approved the first drug to treat COVID-19. Remdesivir is an antiviral medicine given through an IV, and it was used to treat President Trump. Its maker, Gilead Sciences, says that it's approved for people at least 12 years old who need hospitalization for coronavirus infections. A large U.S. study found it cut recovery time by five days. New body cam video tonight shows the moment a San Diego police officer opened fire on a Rancho Peñasquitos man who pulled a gun during an arrest. Sixty-one-year-old Richard Young was shot by police last week after they responded to a domestic violence call placed by his wife. Young had made statements on the 911 call that he wanted to be shot by police. Investigators say he had a revolver. He was hospitalized, but he is expected to survive. Right now, we are just one hour away from the final presidential debate before the election. Both President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden will take the stage in Nashville in an attempt to sway any voters who are still undecided. But with just a week and a half before the election and in a race that's been as contentious as this one, just how many undecided voters are left? News Aid's Kelly Hesedal takes a closer look. Well, according to national polls, there's still about 5% of registered voters who haven't made up their minds. We spoke to an undecided voter here in San Diego who says the problem is neither candidate impresses him. Some might wonder how can it be this close to the election and, and you still not know who you're going to vote for? Yeah, um, I don't know, I take it as like getting in every piece of information I possibly can. I mean, there's still Cornell University right? student Diego uh, Estrada says he still bad. hasn't made up his mind. Right. We've been following Estrada's journey as part of our first time voter series. And like many undecided voters, but he says it's the two candidates that are the problem. Them. None of them are wooing me over. He'll be watching tonight's final presidential debate, but says he isn't sure he'll hear anything that will sway him in either direction. Estrada is among the 26% of San Diegans who don't register with either party. According to the Secretary of State, the number of registered voters in California has increased by 11% compared to 2016. And San Diego has the second highest increase in voter registration. UC San Diego political science professor Thad Kauser. There are fewer undecideds coming into this election than there were in the last election. That means less room for last minute changes. But the votes haven't been cast yet. And people who, who have made up their mind could change their mind if there is some October surprise. He points out there's still about six to seven percent of undecided voters in key battleground states, which means there is still drama in the last two weeks of this election. Most undecided voters are going to go with their hunch, just as most independent voters lean and traditionally vote with one party or the other. But we've seen dramatic events over the last few years, just before election days. As for Estrada, I think I think it's just going to be like you know I see the two names 
He says he won't make a decision until Election Day. Kelly Hesedal, News 8. And here are three things to know about the debate right now. One, the Commission on Presidential Debates has instituted new procedures for tonight, including a mute button to ensure a smoother event than the chaotic first debate, despite pushback from the president's campaign. Two, the debate topics were chosen by the moderator, NBC's Kristen Welker, and they cover a range of issues from COVID-19 to race to climate change and national security. In three, both camps say that the candidates have tested negative for the coronavirus. They will still be separated by plexiglass. Here's tonight's lineup on CBS 8. You can watch the presidential debate beginning at 6, right after the CBS Evening News, which starts at 5.30. The debate will be followed by Big Brother at 8, SWAT at 9, a simulcast of CW San Diego's News at 10, followed by News 8 at 11. The president's Supreme Court pick moved one step closer to being appointed to the highest court in the land today. Republicans on the Senate Judiciary Committee unanimously voted in favor of moving forward with Judge Amy Coney Barrett's nomination. Notably absent were all 10 Democrats on the committee who boycotted debate today's vote in protest of what they called a rushed process. The full Senate is expected to vote on the nomination on Monday. State officials report nearly 3,000 new coronavirus today. If that's in addition to 162 deaths. California's two-week average positivity rate is now at 2.6 percent. More than 880,000 people have been infected statewide. More than 17,000 have died. More than 17 million people have been tested across the state. We'll bring you the latest numbers from San Diego County officials as soon as we learn them. You've seen the viral rants of people refusing to wear a mask in businesses like stores, but can a business legally kick them out? News 8's Brandon Lewis looks at where the law leaves off and where store policies begin. Brandon? Yeah, Barbara Lee, I think we've all seen signs like these that say that you are required to wear a face covering when inside of the store. It is certainly their policy, but it's also the law in California, and it's been consistently held up by courts. We've all seen videos like these. Thank you. No. Thank you. A person refusing to wear a mask inside a store and berating a retail worker tasked with enforcing the rules. It does seem in the last couple of months a very small majority of groups want to make a political point. But we just say the grocery store is not the place to do that. While some equate the mask law with a no shirt, no shoes, no service policy, they are not the same. California requires businesses to help enforce mask use. The other is a business's choice. It's strange that these people say, I have a constitutional right not to wear a mask, at, at the same time completely disregarding the rights of private property owners. Multiple constitutional law experts say time and again the courts have upheld mask laws. A state government has something called the police power, which allows it to protect the health and welfare of its people. There are some exceptions, like preventing discrimination based on gender and race. A preference against mask use isn't one of them. As long as businesses are enforcing that in a non-discriminatory manner, as long as they're requiring everyone to wear a mask, um, they have the right on their premises to say, if you want to shop here, you have to wear a mask. And many legal experts point out that if you don't want to follow that policy, you are certainly free to go to another business or buy your items in a different way.